In celebration of the Walt Disney Company's 100th anniversary, Disneyland has an all-new fireworks spectacular, Wondrous Journeys, and so far people have been raving about this and calling it the best fireworks spectacular Disneyland has had in a number of years. So in this video we're going to tell you about the best places to view this show, to make sure you're saving time, but also getting a great view of the show. So let's dive in. Hey there, my name is Eric D, and on this channel my hope is always to make your next Disney adventure a little bit more magical with tips and tricks, food reviews, and news. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. But as I mentioned, this new fireworks spectacular, Wondrous Journeys, is very, very popular. And so these tips we're going to give you are going to make sure you are getting a good spot to view it. Because there are several different locations where you can view it, but there's pros and cons to each of those. And not only will I give you the pros and cons of each location, but also some very specific tips and tricks to make sure you are getting the right angle and everything that you want. So first, let's talk about when you can view this show, because Disneyland, unlike Walt Disney World, does not have fireworks every night. During the summer times, during spring break, and during holidays, yes, Disneyland has fireworks every night. But during much of the year, they have it on the weekends, but not on the weeknights. So Monday through Thursday, you are likely not going to be seeing these unless it is a holiday, spring break, or summertime. So definitely be checking the Disneyland app or the Disneyland website to see what their schedule is looking like, but just keep that in mind if you're there Monday through Thursday. It's likely, if it's not summertime or spring break, you might not see the fireworks, but they still do projections each night that are involved in the show. They do lighting, and so they do the music, the projections, and they also have two characters that appear up near the castle, and that still happens even when it's just projections and no fireworks. The other thing to keep in mind is even when it is okay to have fireworks and they're planning on it, Many, many times Disneyland has to cancel the fireworks due to winds at higher elevations. So shortly before the show starts, they usually let a balloon off. Um, if you're watching for it, it happens near the top of Main Street, a little white balloon they let go, and they see what the winds are looking like higher up. And if it's too windy, they will announce that they are canceling it, and that night they will only have projections. So just something to keep in mind that even on those nights where you might be planning for it, if the weather is not good, once again, unlike Walt Disney World where there can be crazy rain or it can be storming and they'll still do the fireworks at Disneyland with the neighborhoods all around and the other businesses all around, they can't be launching fireworks in that situation. Something to keep in mind about how the fireworks launch at Disneyland, the largest shells um, do not launch directly in the middle behind the castle. They are, if you're looking towards the castle, it's slightly to the left if you are the castle yourself. It is to the right of the castle. So just keep that in mind that as you're staring at it, it's going to be to your left a little bit where the main um, fireworks are shooting off. Wondrous Journeys is getting rave reviews. It includes nods to all the main Disney animated films that have been made. And so you will see that either through music or you'll see characters being projected onto Main Street, onto the facade of It's a Small World. They involve lots of different characters, lots of different songs, and you will see flying high above Sleeping Beauty Castle, the Blue Fairy from Pinocchio, and also Baymax. So two very cool things about this show that are unique. You won't see Tinkerbell this time, but I love that they included the Blue Fairy and it looks like the Baymax part is very cool too. With those things in mind, let's talk about the different places you can view the fireworks. So the place that I think most people think about viewing the fireworks is right in front of the castle, right there up front. So you can see the fireworks right behind it. You can see the projections right on the castle. And of course you have a good view of when the characters that are involved in the show appear high in the sky. The great thing about this is yes, you do get an amazing view of the fireworks that launch at the castle, and also you can get a good view of the fireworks that launch behind the castle. There are some of the larger ones that if you are too close to the castle, you might miss the bottom of them just because of the view, but for the most part, you're getting a great view of those. You're getting a great view of the projections. The problem with this spot is to have any chance of this very, very front spot near the castle. It is a two hour wait. People start camping out about two hours at least before the show. So, if you are, if this is the main thing you want to see, if the fireworks are the main thing, then you can definitely go for it at that. But the concern of course is if the winds at higher elevation kick in, then you've lost two, maybe three hours waiting for the fireworks. And of course you get a good view for the projections, but the projections are not probably what you were waiting to see. You were waiting to see those fireworks. So if you only visit Disneyland every so often, every few years, I am guessing you probably don't want to spend that two to three hours hoping to see the fireworks. So there are plenty of other good places to see the fireworks. So let's just move back down Main Street and talk about the different situations. So there's still good areas to view throughout the hub, but one thing to keep in mind is there are those trees throughout the hub. So if you're standing somewhere and you're looking up and the trees are somewhat blocking your view of above the castle, then the trees are going to block the view when the fireworks start. 
So keep that in mind that unlike Walt Disney World where they got rid of lots of the trees in the hub, Disneyland still has those. So sometimes I will see people who they come in the hub and they say, oh look, there's still spots here where everyone else is filled in and they think they found a good spot in the hub. The reason why that area is still kind of open is because it's not a good spot because the trees are going to be blocking the view. So you wanna make sure in the hub area, you are able to view the castle and a little bit to the left of that up there. As you move back down Main Street, there is still going to be great viewing area, but we're gonna talk through the pros and cons of each of those areas. So in the area kind of between the Plaza Inn and Jolly Holiday Bakery, and then going to the very top of Refreshment Corner and the main buildings on Main Street, that is a great view once again of the castle. You can see the castle well, and you can also see the fireworks great there. You can see the projections on the castle, but what you can't see is they also do projections on the Main Street buildings. So if you just move a little bit further back, you're gonna have a better view of the projections themselves because you are a little ways from the castle, so you won't see all the detail on there. So if you're hoping to see the projections, I would move just a little bit further back onto Main Street so you can see those a little bit better. If once again, the main thing you're hoping to see is the fireworks, that is a great spot right there. Moving further back, if you are going to be on Main Street, position yourself a little bit to the right on Main Street because there is a large tree up by Refreshment Corner that will block your view of some of the biggest shells that you're gonna see. So definitely be a little bit to the right of Main Street. Once again, those shells are going to be launching on your left-hand side as you're staring up there. And so you can see the projections well on either side of you, and you'll be able to see the fireworks and it's great. You won't have as good a view of the characters that will be flying over the castle, but you can still see a little bit of them. You'll, see, you'll definitely see them, but it's not gonna be a close-up experience. The further back you get on Main Street, the harder it is to see certain things. So you will be seeing the projections, but once you get down into Town Square, you are not going to be seeing projections because they only do those on the front sides of the building. So not on the sides that are facing the train station. There are no projections there. And also with some of the trees there, the flagpole, you're going to not see some of the things that are happening up at the castle. So definitely don't be all the way back near the train station. For the best viewing experience on Main Street, I would recommend starting at about the middle of Main Street, going up towards the hub. Don't be in that back half of Main Street. Of course, they have the projections. You can still see things, but it's not going to be quite the viewing experience you want. And to get this area, I would definitely recommend being there more than 30 minutes in advance, probably 30, 45 minutes in advance and standing there. And yes, prepare yourself because there are going to be people who are sneaking in throughout the whole time, you know, squishing in. So you might wait there 30 minutes and someone's going to stand, you know, come and keep squishing in closer and closer. So keep that in mind. People can do that. It's going to happen but you wanna make sure you're finding the spot you want. So even though people are squishing in, you are able to have the spot and location that you want to view the fireworks. Now, if Main Street, the hub, and the castle are a bit too hectic or crowded for you, there's still two more options inside the park that have great views. And one of those is over at the Rivers of America. So if it's a night where they have Fantasmic and you are watching Fantasmic, the first showing, just stay there. Do not try and run over to Main Street to see the fireworks because you will miss it. They will send you on some path and all of a sudden you'll be walking towards the exit of the park and you're not gonna have a good view of that because they're gonna say, keep it moving, keep it moving. And you're gonna be basically walking down Main Street on the sidewalk instead of getting to watch the fireworks and it's gonna be too crowded to be able to see anything. So if you're over watching the first showing of Fantasmic, just stay where you are because a few minutes later, the fireworks will begin and they will be right over Big Thunder Mountain area, and they will actually do the projections on the water screens and on the island. And they actually incorporate some of the fountains into the show, so it's really a great experience. Now the water screens, of course, are not as big as the buildings on Main Street or the facade of It's a Small World, which we'll talk about. So you don't get all of the projections, but you definitely get a great view of the fireworks. So the positives of this area, if you're watching that first showing of Fantasmic, you get to stay where you are, you get the projections, you get the fireworks. What you are gonna miss out on is seeing the characters that fly over the castle. You are not gonna have a good view of that. And also you will not be able to have a good view of the fireworks that launch directly at the castle because there's the fireworks, the large ones that launch behind Disneyland. And then there are some shells that shoot off right at the castle. So you won't have a good view of those. And keep in mind that ideally you would be at the center watching Fantasmic or a little bit to the side on the left side if you're facing the stage. The closer you get to Big Thunder Mountain, the harder it's going to be to view the water screens and the fireworks at the same time. You're gonna to have to be turning your head. So ideally, if you're closer to the entrance of Pirates of the Caribbean and also Cafe Orleans as you're wrapping around the river, you're going to have a better view. And the last location we're gonna talk about within Disneyland itself is back by Small World because they do the projections on the facade of It's a Small World and you have a great view of the large fireworks that are launching behind the park. Now, the positive with this is this is probably one of the best places to watch 
the projections themselves because Small World is a very large attraction. They can project it all on there. The crowds are not bad back here usually because most people want to be up by the castle to see those. The negative is you're not going to see the characters that fly over the castle because that is behind you and you're also not going to be seeing the fireworks that launch directly at the castle. So you will miss a few of those, but the bonus of having those large projections very clearly right in front of you, I think might outweigh some of those and then large crowds. So of course we'd all like to be right in front of the castle, but if you want to avoid those crowds, if you want to not have to wait a long time, this is a great location. So I would say you could still get a great spot here 15 minutes before you could be walking up there and it's not going to be a problem. So definitely keep this in mind if those other locations are seeming too hectic or too crowded for you. As you're looking at Small World, once again, if you're facing it, the big fireworks are going to be to the left of It's a Small World. So you will see the projections here and then you'll just look to the left here. So with that in mind, you do want to be a little bit more to the right on It's a Small World Mall as you're walking towards It's a Small World because you don't want to be too far or else trees will be getting in the way of your view of the large fireworks. And let's say you only had two days to visit Disneyland and the first day you had winds at higher elevations when you were in Disneyland so you didn't get to see it and day two is your ticket for California Adventure. You still have a chance to see it. There are a few locations where you don't get the music or the projections inside California Adventure but from Cars Land and also from some areas in Avengers Campus you can see it or some people sit in the esplanade between the two entrances of the park over the train station. Once again, you can see the fireworks, but you're not getting any projections. You're not getting any music, but if you just want to see those fireworks, that's one location you can view those. So depending on what your priorities are for your visit to Disneyland, you can see there are plenty of good options for seeing the fireworks. Whether you do want to make the fireworks the number one priority and wait that two to three hours to get that perfect view right in front of the castle, or whether you really want to see Fantasmic and so you're going to get a great view already if you get that Fantasmic viewing location. Or if you want to just sneak in the last few minutes somewhere on Main Street or by It's a Small World, there are plenty of great options. It's just depending on what means the most to you. Seeing the fireworks, seeing the projections, the location. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please give a like. In the comments down below, I would love to hear your favorite spot to view the fireworks and any tips and tricks you have to make the most of the fireworks. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see y'all again real soon.